Secretary General Jürgenstock, distinguished, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Singapore. We are honoured to co-host this year's Interpol Asian Regional Conference. This is an important event for the Interpol family. This year's edition is all the more significant because we just had the honour and pleasure to inaugurate the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation in Singapore earlier this week on Monday. We look forward to Secretary General Stock's stewardship of Interpol, one of the most important security agencies internationally. His presence in this conference is testament to his commitment and we'd like to see more of him in this part of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the Asian Regional Conference is an established forum, and this year it marks its 22nd edition. This biennial conference is a key platform for Interpol's Asian and South Pacific member countries to share experiences and best practices in the fight against crime, as well as to forge relationships, partnerships within the enforcement family. Forging strong partnership is essential to enable the flow of information and intelligence to facilitate collaboration across countries. Our region is a prosperous one. Asia-Pacific economies continue to enjoy growth year after year. However, this rapid economic growth increases the attractiveness of this region to organized crimes. Law enforcement agencies, therefore, need to be more alert to the threats that are lurking so that we can protect the safety and stability of our region. And this can come from many forms, including terrorist attacks, which are effectively prevented and countered only if we can work together. There are three key areas in the safety and security domain that must dominate our attention in this time of the year, in this time of the age. First, traditional crime concerns the and remains prevalent in the region. Second, the rising threat of terrorism. And third, policing in the cyber domain. Traditional security concerns. Traditional illegal activities such as production and trafficking of drugs, counterfeiting and human trafficking, these continue to be areas of concern. However, they are now aided by advances in technology, especially cheaper and improved transportation and communication, and criminals will use this as effectively as they can. Therefore, it's ironic that these advances are being used by them and connectivity that comes so easily for everybody facilitate illegal activities. There's also sale of counterfeit medicine, for example, and dishes are being pushed through the internet and convenient courier services, which also come very cheap nowadays. Criminals will continue to leverage technologies that include the internet and web exchanges, and they will use this to traffic for sexual exploitation. It is estimated that annual earnings of transnational organized crime in the Asia-Pacific region alone exceeds 360 US billion dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, another evolving threat that links organized crime is terrorism. They include the funding of terrorist groups through illegal activities of organized crime networks. And this brings to my next point, terrorism. The Sydney siege in December 2014, the Paris attack in January 2015, and the Copenhagen shooting in February 2015, almost month after month, are stark examples of recent terrorist attacks and atrocities. As we all know, terrorists are opportunistic, they're difficult to detect, especially the homegrown ones. They are all potential time bombs that can destabilize the safety and security of our countries. 
and also of our region, and therefore require collective interagency and international efforts to tackle them. Terrorism is one of the most pressing challenges we face today. Southeast Asia is home to indigenous Islamic militant groups. In the past, these groups were relatively weak, and they only operated within their own countries, and the focus that they have is only on domestic issues. With the emergence of radical Islamization, and largely due to globalization, these groups have learned to cooperate with each other, and larger terrorist groups outside the region for funding and training are facilitating these regional local terrorist groups. They have now become a global threat. A newer significant concern is self-radicalization. There's an estimated 6,000 extremist websites currently online. People, therefore, especially youth, can be easily influenced by terrorist ideology and messages. This increases the threat of lone wolf attacks by terrorists who are actually not part of any network. Even though the scale of the attacks may be small, not massive, these autonomous, autonomous small scale attacks do cause significant community fear and are more difficult to detect. Finally, as our region develops and our people become more technologically savvy, key aspects of our daily lives, such as financial transactions, have moved to the cyber domain. And criminals follow where the money go. They too have moved to the cyber domain. Cybercrime, therefore, has emerged as the most prevalent, prevalent technology-enabled crime of today. The enormity provided by the internet, the lack of regulations governing the use of cyberspace, the easy pickings that, present in, that are present in cyberspace because of poor security awareness and poor security hygiene, increase and attract organized crime and terrorists to embrace cybercrime as their preferred mode of crime. In addition to the financial attraction, the cyber domain is increasingly used to spread fear, religious extremism, and ideological propaganda. Critical infrastructures of nations, from banking to gen energy generation, are today also highly reliant on computers. Running on electronic platforms, these infrastructures are also vulnerable to malicious disruptions by hackers. The cyber attack last week on the French television network TV5 Monday is a stern reminder of our public platform's vulnerability. Singapore too has not been spared by cyber attacks with both government and commercial websites targeted. Cybercrime has the potential to inflict damage at all levels of society and is a major concern for the region and globally. We must work together to tackle these threats. The three areas that I've mentioned are the key security threats we face as a collective Asia-Pacific group. I cannot emphasize enough that it is, a common, it is common interest of all countries here, whether regionally or globally, that we band together, that we must nurture a network of cooperation and trust where bilateral and multilateral cooperation are nurtured so that we can fight against these criminal activities individually, bilaterally, and globally. I have to say that we have done considerably well to facilitate regional dialogue on safety and security. The ASEAN Ministerial Meeting on Transnational Crime, the East Asia Summit and ASEAN Poll allow leaders of our region to meet and discuss the pressing security challenges in our region on a regular basis and to come up with solutions and cooperation proposals on how we can deal with these challenges. Interpol too has a key role to play in safety and security and I like to commend Interpol for its tireless efforts in building bridges among member countries to form the global network to fight crime.
crime internationally. The Interpol of today offers member states good operational value. Member countries can actively engage and leverage Interpol's databases of and information sharing networks to assist one another in our crime-fighting effort. Interpol has also organised various capability-building conferences for member countries to learn best practices and to build networks to combat transnational crimes. A good example is the first Eurasian Working Group on Cybercrime for the Head of Units held in Singapore last year. The Working Group has, was expanded from the previous Asia-Pacific Working Group on IT crimes to include our European counterparts. Over two days, this working group discussed ways to strengthen cooperation and operational support, capacity building, as well as harmonise international efforts in combating cybercrime. Interpol has also coordinated many successful joint operations to disrupt criminal networks in the region, such as Operation Soccer Gambling, an ongoing tactical operation coordinated by Interpol, bringing countries together to combat organised illegal soccer gambling in Asia. The last operation, held during the 2014 FIFA World Cup, resulted in more than 1,000 raids and approximately 1,400 arrests. Well done. With the establishment of the IGCI in Singapore, we can look forward to even better support, presence from Interpol for the region's crime-fighting efforts particularly in the area of cybercrime. The IGCI is well-placed to be the global policing hub for cybercrime issues, facilitating cooperation between national cybercrime investigators and private partners through the sharing of data, expertise and knowledge. I hope it will also strengthen the global network of cybercrime investigators to the setting of global standards and protocols in cybercrime investigations and forensics. We already seen, have seen the good work done by IGCI. Just last year, IGCI coordinated a successful operation against a crime group in the Philippines, which preyed on thousands of victims in Asia through sextortion scams conducted online. With the sharing of information between Interpol and regional police forces, the operation yielded the arrest of 66 suspects and seizure of 350 electronic devices. Earlier this week, Interpol also announced a highly successful operation conducted and coordinated by the IGCI tackling the SIMDA botnet. SIMDA has been used by cyber criminals to gain remote access to computers, allowing criminals to steal personal details and install malicious, malicious malware. Coordinating the efforts and capabilities are private partners such as Microsoft, Trend Micro, Kaspersky Lab, and Interpol unveiled useful intelligence by mapping the spread of the infection, allowing Interpol to locate the sources and take enforcement action. Ladies and gentlemen, this current aid demands that all of us in law enforcement agencies to work tightly and collaboratively so that we have an enabling network. This week, we have seen the IGCI open on a high note with its latest operational success. The first ever Interpol World Conference and Exhibition, and now this Asian Regional Conference. These networking platforms have aimed at facilitating relationship building on an institution to institution level, and I hope also from a person to person level because these are all important parts of acquisition of new knowledge and intelligence among ourselves. I hope that you all will fully leverage these opportunities. Let me conclude that for all of us here, a safer Asia and South Pacific region is our common aim, and so it is for us for a peaceful and secure world. It is certainly within our reach, provided we can collectively harness the full potential of the law enforcement agencies in our region. We have to work hand in glove together, particularly also with Interpol and now with our presence in IGCI. 
I would like to encourage all participants to build this strong network, share your experiences at this 22nd Interpol Asian Regional Conference. The collective wisdoms of this conference will translate into real, into tangible cooperation and for all of us, sharper enforcement strategies. Let me wish all of you a successful and fruitful conference and don't forget to enjoy Singapore and to keep us safe and secure. Thank you very much. Thank you.